Hi, just a quick video looking at this Fluke uh, 1AC Volt Alert voltage stick. And it's an excellent voltage stick. If you haven't looked at it, it's got all the, um, I got this, I don't know when I got this, long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Um, this was an Asian import one, but it is a genuine uh, Fluke. It was just made for the Asian uh, market or whatever. But um, anyway, yeah, I did cat 4,000 volts, but you know, it's like <laughs> one of these voltage sticks, right? And um, unfortunately, the magic smokers kind of escaped, or the uh, magic uh, fluid escaped from some alkaline batteries in here. So yeah, it did actually have um, some leaky alkalines and a corroded uh, terminal in here. And the symptoms were when I, you know, you put brand new batteries in, because uh, the contacts still looked okay. And it didn't look like there was much damage to the PCB. It was just, you know, a corroded terminal. I'll show you in a minute. But uh, yeah, I, I turned it on and uh, it would only do a single beep, which is supposed to do a double beep when you turn it on. And there were no LED flashes at all because it's got a multicolored LED um, inside this white um, uh, end tip here. And uh, so now, but then I sprayed it with some isopropyl and now it's doing this. It's now just um, like... Oh, uh, yeah, you can't see that, but that is, trust me, that is red. <laughs> wow, it looks yellow. <laughs> it looks yellow on my screen. But um, trust me, that is not yellow. That is actually red, so that might be a colour imbalance. There we go. Turn the iris down, and it actually looks red. It's just that it's, it's darker. But in real life, yeah, that's just a camera thing. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's put that back on auto ex exposure mode. So, yeah, it... It doesn't do anything and it doesn't work. You know, you try and detect AC with it and it does nothing. So let's um, try and take a look at this, try and get it apart. That's, uh, the plastic's not going to do it, is it? No. No, so let's get that apart. And these are two brand new tested batteries. So no worries there. 1.57 volts a pop. And if we have a look down in here, you can probably see, yeah, you can see the corrosion, right? That is... Not a happy camper. It was a little bit worse than that, but I basically, um, you know, it's, I, I haven't brushed it or anything. I didn't actually brush the thing. Maybe I should. It, it's still a, I thought, I think it should be a reasonable contact. It's soldered down to the PCB and everything, like the end that goes onto the battery seems good. So yeah, it's, uh, it's Krusty Burger. But, um, you know, I, I thought it shouldn't impact like the way it works, because obviously it's getting power. Right, so it's not like it's a bad contact on there. It shouldn't be because it's so little power. Even a bad contact uh, resistance on there wouldn't cause a problem, really, or shouldn't. Anyway, so yeah, um, let's try and get this thing apart. Unfortunately, I can't see a way to get this apart. And you can see down in there, we've got obviously two parts of these ca and this case is joined like that. So you're not going to get those apart, and you can't pry this open. So I reckon there's got to be some sort of clip, because this um, PCB does not pull out. So there's got to be some sort of clip on, it doesn't look like there's any clips down the side or anything like that. So, because this board should just slide out, you shouldn't have to get this end cap off. It should just slide, because it's already like out the end like this. So I reckon there's got to be some sort of clip under this top part holding it in. So um, yeah, I don't know, let me, uh, let me fiddle with it and I'll get back to you. Because this is the only access hole I've got. <laughs> I, mean, I figure they would have put in a way, maybe they wouldn't have put in a way to put it out, but to get it back apart. Because, you know, they're not going to repair these things, but uh, no, no, I feel like there's something under there. <laughs> I'm probably crushing a component. Now, I do actually have a, um, a bent um, screwdriver for, you know, for accessing, uh, you know, for this sort of task, um, but I can't find it in the lab. So it's, it's in here somewhere. <laughs> Tweezers. Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, yeah, I'm going to get that, going to get that button out of there. Ooh, is one of the terminals corroded? That's interesting. Well, that would explain it. There could be more damage in here than what I originally suspected. Is there anything up in there? Maybe. Yeah, I think there's a clip up under there that's holding it in. Doesn't seem to be anything in the other direction. Yeah, that um, that contact looks crusty, doesn't it? <laughs> now it's just continually beeping. <laughs> it's just getting worse. Okay, I do have a slightly curved one. Let's give this a bow and see if we can't... I reckon there's... 
I reckon there's a clip under plastic clip under there or something. Probably have to pull at the same time. Oi! Got it! Got it! Got it! Got it! <laughs> We're in! We're in! Oh, they... They are! That's a... That's a clip! That, that's... I think that's what I... Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! It's... It's up... It's up this end! Oh, look! Yeah, look! Wow! There you go! That's... <laughs> they got a surface mount clip! Isn't that cool? Well, it's, it's annoying, but... Kind of cool. So when, you know, it, you, A, you can surface mount it, right? So they just got this custom spring. Um, or is that a... Th no, that's no, a through-hole jobby. There you go. Um, and, yeah, so they just solder that in. And then when you push it in, it goes clip. There will be a... Yeah. Yep. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Sneaky buggers, huh? Anyway, there you go. We have a teardown. Oh, upside down, all the electrons are going to fall out. They haven't already. Oh no, the chips. Oh, it's upside down again. But there you go. We have a diode E. And, uh, oh, oh, geez, is that some. Is that trace eating away or is that. Looks like it's got some pit. A little pit taken out of it. Anyway, it's, it's good though. It's intact. No worries. Anyway, got a couple of transistories and we've got one custom. Um, micro here, that'd be a custom, you know, a pre-programmed micro, I, it wouldn't be a custom ASIC, would it? I don't know, Fluke might have done a custom ASIC, um, for this thing. But there you go, there's a, uh, 10 meg resistor there, and that's about all she wrote. There ain't much in it at all, and yeah, those contacts are, are terrible, so, but, uh, they're in parallel, so, you know, it doesn't matter which side of the button you push, either of those contacts, um, but as I said, the button worked, because it, it comes on. Then we've got a multicoloured LED up there, don't be fooled, it's not just a red, it does actually do different colours, I believe, from memory, and then the, the probe is just um, a uh, just the metal poked into the middle there, which just then extends into the tip, like that. So, uh, there's nothing in these AC voltage sticks, but it doesn't look to be... <laughs> that doesn't look good, does it? But still, there's nothing eaten away in here. That is crusty burger. But that that wouldn't explain why it doesn't work, really. I mean, there's there's not much else that can go wrong in here. Although, look at that. Is that all some crustiness? Trying, um, I'm just trying to get the contrast down there. I can adjust the there. Yeah, look. Yeah, look. It's just got crud all under the chip. I think. So I think that just needs a thorough clean. Uh, we'll just get the isopropyl, and get the stiff brush here, and give that a good clean in. Because this is a high impedance circuit, and if you got crustiness under there, that would, that would explain it. And that contact too, that's terrible Muriel. But, like I said, the contact is not the problem. Ooh, that's just, yeah, that's just corroded away. But yeah, not, not, not the problem. So that certainly looks better now. But who knows what's under that. Let's just put the batteries in and have a squeeze. Cause like, I don't think it's like the, like the chip hasn't failed or something like that. It's obviously, oh, hello. That, that was a double beep. It's supposed to do the double beep thing. Yeah. That that is the correct business. So yeah, it's it's yeah, it's supposed to flash like that. It's working again. There you go. No worries. Not a prompt. Yep. I I think if I get a mains cable near that. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to go. It's good to go. Yep. I think it's fixed. <laughs> it's just battery leakage. There you go. Un unsurprising, but I didn't think it would get that far in. So that's interesting. It looks like it accumulated under the chip. It's damaged this pad over here, but really nothing else, nothing else is damaged. So anyway, I'm going to give this rest of this a bit of a bit of a clean and I now I can get in there with that contact because you couldn't get in there before with a brush or anything. But oh, geez, that's that's pretty horrible. But like I said, the contact is still the surface of the contacts. OK. And it's not really eaten away, so 
what I'll do is I'll get the old uh, white vinegar here and I'll just dab that on there just to neutralize the any remaining acid in this thing so that should stop some of the rot I mean there's obviously some rot happened like as it just it's leaked and it's gone down here has it I don't know, that, that, that seems odd anyway anyway the whole thing gets a thorough spanking and hopefully this thing should be like a bought one well not not quite you know it <laughs> once that acid like it, it was been it had been in there for a long time I don't know how long um, but it like I don't know maybe a year or something was the last time I used this in anger so yeah I'd totally uh, expect that because this is a high impedance circuit so yeah if it got under that chip I just didn't think from lo looking from the outside it didn't seem to have um, didn't seem to have gotten that far in but obviously it's gone under and, and it's accumulated under the chip so yeah if you get leakage under there that would explain that explains everything so oh is that that via there is not looking too healthy is it oh yeah that's not looking healthy is it that's not a happy camper wow look at that via it's eating away inside there I'm tempted to I'm tempted to give that a touch up actually yeah that's not great I am tempted to give that a touch up like how long this lasts after this I don't know I mean I could take that chip off and I could um, clean under there and put it back but I don't think I'm achieving a huge amount by doing that but yeah that could do with a touch up couldn't it although it still works so you know the, the other ones oh no that one down there is not good is it <laughs> vote in the comments down below <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah like I it obviously I can get it working again and yeah around the cap there can get it working again but long term it's not it's not terrific so I don't think I'm going to go to the effort to get the chip out and do that I'll just keep it as a secondary one perhaps but yeah it's interesting how it gets in selected locations isn't it no, it could have made its way along the top inside and then got down, yeah, it then it got down through the vias perhaps because that's how it could leak on the, because there's no cover over this on the uh, top side here, so the batteries are directly against the board like that, so maybe that's how, is there any, no, there's no vias under that chip, no, so yeah, I reckon, yeah, it's just some leakage has gone along the battery because these batteries of course, I've done many videos on this. They they they're not going to leak at the positive end because there's no seal, right? That's a the seal is at the bottom end. You can see the seal in the end of that, right? There it is. There, there's that rubber seal. That's where it's going to leak out. But once it leaks out, it can like surface tension can just bring it. Depends if it what angle it's stored at, and you know <laughs> um, how Murphy's uh, going to get you. And yeah, it can leak down the outside of the battery and then leaks in through yeah I think it leaked through that via that via there and that's where most of the, and that's how it's sort of like got down and under the chip there so that's interesting the double flash yeah the double flash is indicating says it's work so the, you know this is like a smart thing because it's got various modes and stuff like that it's got low voltage modes and and things and yeah the double flash is supposed to tell you that that is working yeah, there we go. So I can just get that. It's just picking up stray 50 hertz and then the ESD mat here. So anyway, I've done the best that I can short of removing the chip. So if I snap that back in, it's going to do the snappy snap. Totally have to lift that clip up a bit more. All right, now I can feel it's going to clip. There we go. Ah, clipped in. There you go. That is a cute, if rather annoying design quirk. But anyway, if we... Oh, I forgot to put the button back in oh there we go and yep still double flash so she's working i can shove that back in there no worries there we go so i turned it off and it's now should turn on yep yep got double flash and she's working again no worries 
Oh, it's come on. I think I've disabled. Oh, there we go. Yeah, because if you hold it down when you turn it on, I think you disable the buzzer or whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you can have visual or, yeah, it's got different power on modes. So there you go. That one's obviously the active. That one is the neutral. And um, it, it's not going to do earth either. So it, it's pretty discriminatory. I, I've always liked the Fluke AC. What is it? 1AC? I can never remember what it is. The Fluke 1AC. It was always my uh, voltage stick uh, of choice, but uh, uh, quite a lot. Often now I'll use like uh, one of my BM, uh, one of my Bryman uh, meters, just to, you know, if I just need something. But I do have another uh, couple of uh, voltage sticks lying around. But yeah, I do like the Fluke one. But there you go. Bloody battery leakage again. Anyway, let us know in the comments down below um, what voltage stick you actually prefer to use or if you don't like them at all. Oh, that button's a bit dodgy now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I don't... Uh, once the rot started on the PCB and something like this, you know, you want it to work. So anyway, it still works. It's back in operation, but for how long? I don't know. Could have potentially... You know, as I said, could have removed uh, the chip, got under there, make sure, you know, everything's clean, and then resolder the whole thing, redo those uh, redo those vias and stuff like that. But, eh, uh, is it worth the effort? Anyway, it's fixed. It works. There you go. Quick video. If you liked it, thumbs up. Discuss down below. Catch you next time.